Hey family, I am Pastor Jeremy and I want to welcome you to our Saturday Lenten devotional series. Um, I hope that so far as we close out our second week of our Lenten journey, that it's been a time that's been self-reflective for you. I hope it's been a time that's been shaping for you. It, it's really a, a special time to be able to wrestle with and live in the roughness and, and the uncomfortability of the journey that leads to the cross. And so I hope that we're all taking advantage uh, of this time to be real and raw and honest and lament. Um, but we are still in our Dying to Live sermon series where we look at the things of this word that we need to let go of and give up so that we can, so that our hands can be free to pick up the things of new life and life uh, more abundantly that God has for us. Uh, this week specifically, we're talking about dying to ego and we're using Mark 10 to talk about those things. And whenever we talk about Mark 10 or whenever I talk about Mark 10, the passage that really sticks with me is 35 through 45. And that's where Jesus is bidding the children to come to him, uh, even though the disciples are kind of trying to shoo them away. And I think one of the reasons that it sticks with me is because I think that even today, we very seldom privilege the wisdom and experiences of children. When if we don't let our egos as adults and older people get in the way, there's so much that children have to say. There's so much that children see that we don't see. They can truly feed our hearts and our minds. Uh, and it all takes me back to a time when I well, was a part of a children's ministry and I was often tasked with uh, finding little stories uh, to tell the children that kind of corresponded with the scripture for the day to communicate the same ideas and concepts. And so I hope that our egos aren't so big. I hope that we can die to ego uh, and realize that we have something to learn even from a children's story. So I wanted to share one of those stories with you. Uh, so please now hear the story of the kangaroo and the penguin. There was once a kangaroo who became an athletics champion. However, with his success, he became arrogant and nasty, and he spent a lot of his time making fun of others. His favorite target was a little penguin whose walk was so slow and clumsy that it often prevented him from even finishing the race. One day, the fox who organized the races let everyone know that his favorite for the next race was going to be the poor penguin. Everyone thought it was a joke, but still the big-headed kangaroo got very angry and ridiculed the penguin even more than usual. The penguin didn't even want to take place in the race, but it was a tradition for everyone to participate, so he did. Uh, on the day of the race, he approached the starting line in a group of which was following the fox. The fox led them up the mountain while everyone made fun of the penguin, commenting on whether he would just roll down the mountain or slide down on his big belly. Uh, but when they reached the top of the mountain, everyone was quiet. The top of the mountain turned out to be a crater that had been filled with water, making it into a lake. At this point, the fox gave the starting signal and said, the first to the other side wins. Uh, the penguin, excited, waddled clumsily to the water's edge. Once he was in the water, though, his speed was unbeatable, and he won the race by a long distance. Meanwhile, the kangaroo barely managed to reach the other side. He was tearful, humiliated, and half drowned. And although it seemed like the penguin was waiting to make fun of the kangaroo, the penguin had learned a lot from his suffering. And instead of ridiculing the kangaroo, he offered to teach him how to swim. For the rest of the day, the animals enjoyed themselves playing in the lake, but the one who enjoyed himself the most was the fox, who with his cleverness had managed to bring the kangaroo down a peg. So uh, it was just a simple children's story, right? But I do think, once again, if we don't let our egos get in the way and we, uh, and we pay attention to the story, I think it has some profound things to say. Particularly, I want to focus on the penguin. Um, after having been ridiculed himself, uh, after being able to show what talents he had, he didn't ridicule the fox back. Instead, he looked at his own experiences. He looked at how he felt when it had been done to him and, and said, instead decided to create a different world. And I think that if we can think about the worst that we've ever felt, especially because of someone's ego, and we resolve to create a world where no one else ever has to feel like that again, We'll be on our way to dying to ego. Blessings.